I'm here at the University of Oxford with Tobias Uller to talk about his uh, recent article in Proceedings B. So could you start by just giving us, um, in layman's terms, a definition for epigenetics? Well, it's easier said than done to define epigenetics because it means different things to different people. But I think uh, most would agree that it has to do with how a single genome can produce different types of effects. So the mechanisms that regulate gene expression. So for example, I have in my cell, in my body I have many different cells, mm -hmm. liver cells, muscle cells and so on. They all have the same DNA, but they have different phenotypes, they have different characters. Um, and the reason for that is epigenetics. It regulates what genes that are switched on and what genes that are switched off. Okay, great. Um, and in your paper it talks about um, incomplete resetting of epigenetics. Mm -hmm. um, how exactly does that work? So, <clears throat> epigenetic mechanisms regulate what organisms do, how they respond to different environments. But in between generations, all those things that have been accumulated over the lifespan of an individual shouldn't really be transferred to the next generation because you need to ensure that the next individual can produce all the different types of effects themselves. So that's why most organisms have periods in which the epigenetic marks that have been accumulated are being reset. They're erased and put back on so to ensure a totipotency of the new individual. That typically happens in germ cells, but it can also happen in the early embryo. And exactly what is it that decides um, whether some specific trait is going to be turned on or off? Organisms respond to different types of environments, and then they're changing their gene expression within cells mm -hmm. as, a, as, an, as a consequence of that. Um, but exactly what it is that determines anything in a particular case is very poorly known. There are some cases where we know a lot. For example, regulation of flowering in plants is an example where we know a lot about different epigenetic mechanisms and the intricate details of the molecular machinery. Okay, and um, so in some cases uh, your paper is looking at where it might be beneficial for um, these epigenetic traits to be passed on. Um, how exactly does that work? The key to understand when it will be advantageous to inherit epigenetic marks from ancestors has to do with um, the fact that the environment is variable. So what's best to do depends on the context. In some cases uh, the, uh, it might be cold, in other cases it might be warm. Um, you can, uh, plants can live in shaded environments or in light environments. And what's best to do in those different environments might differ. So. <coughs> Uh, organisms use environmental cues to be able to produce the right type of outcome. Mm -hmm. For example, to grow tall in certain environments and grow short in other environments. Mm -hmm. um, often you can rely directly on environmental cues to tell where you are, but sometimes these cues are not very informative. They might be better to rely on the information that's passed on by the ancestors. Mm -hmm. And that's where this incomplete resetting epigenetic states comes in. And that's what we're trying to understand when will it be advantageous to rely not just on direct cues from the environment but also on states that are passed on from the ancestors. Do you have any examples um, that you could give us of times when this does happen uh, or organisms that, that you can see this in? We have many examples of um, plasticity, organisms mm -hmm. responding to the environment. We have many examples of how they respond differently depending on what their parents did. And we have a few cases where we know that this goes back several generations. We don't know in those cases whether it's actually epigenetic changes okay. or not because we very rarely have enough studies of ecological, ecologically relevant context in organisms and the molecular studies mm -hmm. to be able to assess exactly what's going on. But we also know from the plant Arabidopsis, for example, that um, epigenetic changes can be inherited from many different generations. But we don't know whether whether that stability is the result of natural selection. So what our model does is that it tries to identify the context where this could be favoured and thereby helping empiricists to say where they should go and look for these effects because so far no one has really looked for them. Mm -hmm. And which, uh, which environments did your model find were favourable for kind of selection for uh, incomplete resetting? So it is in environments where direct environmental cues are unreliable 
-hmm. and when the environment changes slowly relative to generation time. Okay. And the reason for that um, can be understood if you think about environments where cues are very reliable, mm -hmm. then you don't need to have any other information. Mm -hmm. Individuals know where they are by assessing the environment directly. Mm -hmm. And passing on epigenetic states will even be detrimental if the environment changes quite rapidly so that your grandchildren um, might not be in the same environment as you. On the other hand, <coughs> if environmental cues are not reliable and the environment changes slowly relative to generation time, uh, partial epigenetic inheritance or incomplete epigenetic resetting prevents you from producing mismatched characters in the environments because the response to the environment uh, that could produce a mismatch is now prevented by relying on information that's inherited from your ancestors. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so, what are you looking at now? What's next for your research? Well, now the idea is to try to experimentally test whether we can evolve uh, organisms that um, produce these type of incomplete epigenetic set uh, resetting. So we want to try and set up experimental evolution to, to study this. We also want to try and, as I said before, go out and target systems where we think that this could possibly happen. Mm -hmm. And that is organisms that go through a number of generations in the same type of environment, but then the environment might change to something else after 10, 15 generations. And there are cases of that, for example, in seasonal environments mm -hmm. where this might apply. That's great. Thanks so much for inviting us to come here today to speak with you. Thank you.